Hello, everybody. Welcome to the James Kennedy Library in Dyersville, Live, uh, Dyersville, Iowa. And you are here with the Story Society of Iowa, at least part of us, right? And so we're just going to go around, introduce ourselves a little bit, and then um, talk a little bit about what we do as a group and how we found each other. And just share this wonderful evening talking about something that we all love, which is books and reading. So I am Heather Goodenkoff. I'm coming to you from Cedar Rapids today, and I'm the author of 10 novels, uh, Mysteries and Thrillers, and my most recent one is Everyone is Watching, which is the story of five strangers who come together to play this over-the-top uh, reality series game for a prize of $10 million. And unbeknownst to the competitors, when they get to this secluded villa where the game is supposed to be played, they learn that they were brought there for very different reasons than they expected. And as the competition gets more dangerous and deadlier, secrets that they were hoping would stay kind of tamped down have come to the surface and the entire world is watching. It's so good, I've read it. It's so good. <laughs> Thank I can go you. next. I'm Kim yeah. Stewart. I'm coming to you live from West Des Moines, where I live with my husband and my three kids. Um, actually, two of them are kind of in the process of launching, two in college this year and one in high school, and a schnauzer who doesn't have any idea what to do unless I'm in the room. Um, I am the author of eight novels and one new nonfiction book, which is behind my right shoulder there. It's called Star for Jesus and Other Jobs I Quit, Rediscovering the Grace that Sets Us Free. So it's a bunch of very personal, slightly embarrassing stories. Um, <laughs> and the thread line, is, the thread that I pull throughout is that grace is free. And we spend a lot of time working for something that is actually extraordinarily beautiful and all ours for the taking. So it's been a new venture for me. And so far, I think it's gone okay. Um, the fun news this summer was that a Target stores picked it up. Some 500 of them, 500 tar tar Target stores evidently. So um, part of my summer has been encouraging people to let me know if they see it in the wild, which has really probably helped Target's bar bottom line. Because we all know when we go to that store, we spend money we did not intend to spend. I don't know if anyone's buying the book. But a lot of people are buying like <laughs> Joanna Gaines things. So um, that's what we've been up to at our house this summer. It's great to be with you. Thank you for inviting us. Yes, I can go next. My name is Julie Stone. I'm coming to you from Ames, Iowa, where I live with my husband and my two cats as an empty nester. My children have officially launched. Um, I am the author of four books. My latest, um, I write uh, romantic comedies. And my latest is um, He's With the Band. Um, one of the hallmarks of my books is that I focus on older heroines um, with a little bit of uh, experience in their lives. And He's With the Band is about a former groupie who um, drops out of her life to follow a band um, on their reunion tour. And it's loads of fun. More a uh, lot about her falling back in love with her life and also maybe a little love interest. Um, I also write a sub stack about all things Gen X called Musings from the Midsection, which I adore <laughs> writing. So great. Um, yeah, I things I, I'm finally putting to use my memory of things that I apparently cannot um, details of my teen years and early 70s upbringing <laughs> that I cannot let go of. So <laughs> that has been a great fun venture for me. I love it. So I am Nicole Bard. I'm coming to you from Northwest Iowa, Sioux Center. It's a tiny little town in the corner right by South Dakota and Minnesota. So I'm a tri-stater, but love my Iowa roots. Um, I'm a mom of a whole bunch of kids. We have two dogs. Uh, several of my children are launching off to college this year. So I'm not going to be an empty nester, but there's only two at home, which kind of feels like an empty nest to me. Um, yeah. In At this moment, I think there's six people in my house and several of them are not my family members. So <laughs> I'm tucked in my bedroom. <laughs> trying to make this work tonight. So yeah, I have written everything from um, contemporary uh, just novels, normal novels to uh, mysteries, thrillers, suspense. My most recent one is called The Long Way Back. 
Um, it's the story of a mother and daughter Instagram influencer duo who take their vintage Airstream trailer on the road um, all across the United States. And they see all these incredible uh, national parks and all these places that my family and I have been to. Uh, we spent a summer going kind of across the country in our um, pop-up tent trailer. And that was the inspiration of this book. Uh, but the daughter goes missing. And then the rest of the story is trying to figure out where she went and why um, and what happened. So I just turned in my next book to my editor. That'll be coming out um, in 2025. We're thinking November. The book is called A Theory of Infinite Worlds. And I am obsessed with it. I can't wait to share more things um, with friends and family. Oh, and <laughs> Heather, when she... <laughs> Just thumbs up gets fireworks. <laughs> Can you do that again? I want you to do it yeah, on command. Let's so see it. Not on command. Oh. Now it's not going. Oh, you have to oh, feel it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the only other thing I was going to say is I am on Substack too. Um, I have a Substack called This Stays Here, and it's all about living in small town, rural Iowa, and what it's like to be um, a part of a community and how to be a good neighbor. So I'd love to see you there. Wonderful. wonderful. And so Julie, if you could uh, kind of give everybody a sense of what uh, Story Society of Iowa is and how they can find us. Sure. Um, Story Society of Iowa is the um, four of us with, in addition to Callie Van Valley White and Tracy Garvis Graves, who couldn't be here tonight. Um, we came together, I think our first Zoom, gosh, two years ago now, uh, over our just a shared love of our state of Iowa. And since then, we have sort of grown. Sometimes we have guest authors on with us discussing various, I think we've done just the state of Iowa, the state fair, the weather. We did a very fun favorite things event. All of these are, um, we live stream on our Facebook page and then on our individual author pages. We also have a um, Instagram page. Um, it was really just sort of born out of our love of Iowa, but our desire to support each other as fellow Iowa authors um, and just really have a good time. And we we have a good time. We do. We do. Um, we do. And um, I, there is talk, but we need to, everyone needs to not be on a deadline that eventually perhaps we will have a story society of Iowa sub stack. Um, but so far we've all proven a little too busy to get that organized, <laughs> Fine, which is great. Um, but I think it's about just building a community amongst Iowa authors um, and enjoying ourselves. Cause it's a little, it's, it's sort of solitary, this career we've all chosen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's been, I think our last one, we did a slumber party, right? Oh, that's right. We did so, slumber party. That so was the last we, one. We all got in our jammies and I don't think I've laughed so hard in my life. I, <laughs> I can... needed an inhaler. I needed an yeah. actual <laughs> inhaler by the end. I mean, the thing is we we do love to invite people into those spaces and what's so fun, people have live comments. It's a conversation with the folks um, watching, but also we love each other. And so we just end up having a great time laughing at each other's jokes, which we found our family no longer does. Right. So this is fulfilling something that we need. So sometimes we you. forget we have an audience because yep. it's like we're hanging <laughs> to out. our peril. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. And we get to talking about cabbage patch dolls. Oh and, my gosh. And all kinds of, but Very if, dangerous. If, if you're interested and kind of want to hear what it's all about there if you go to the um story society of iowa facebook page i believe there is our last video is up there yep right our last and we've got um, one coming gathering. up too and we do yeah, have one so coming we're gonna, up. we're going so to we'd talk love to a see lot that. a lot more about that so mm -hmm. very exciting very mm -hmm. exciting well so, yeah. Is it my turn? Yes, it is. Okay, Cindy. I have a really great line and it's let's talk books. Mm. Ding. Um, I have a list. I, like list. I well, I wish I had fireworks. Only Heather has the fireworks. <laughs> um I have a but we have a bunch of round robin questions that we would love to kind of go around fast and have a speed round of book lover nerd questions that we all um, would love to share with you. And I, we'd also love to have, um, if we have some time at the end, some Q and a from the journalist and from other people too, if you guys want to pipe in, we'd love to hear from you. So, um, Nicole, I think you're up. I am. So my question is what is your favorite library memory? We all love the library. What's one of your favorite memories from there? 
Do I get to start since I asked the question? You start and then you you tell us, boss us around. (laughs) You're going to have to call on us or we'll talk over each other. (laughs) I'll start then. Um, One of my favorite memories is my dad took me to the library every Saturday when I was a kid. And I did most of my reading in the youth section as one does. And the little shelves were for the little kids. And then the big shelves that kind of came up to your chest were for the older kids. And I'll never forget standing in like the big shelf area, my, you know, the teenage type books, young adult or whatever, and looking at everything and realizing, I I think I might be done here. I'm not the best. Yeah. Like, I I think I'm ready to go into the stacks, which went all the way (laughs) up. And my dad was in there. So I went and I found him and I was like, dad, can you recommend a book to me? I think I want to read something from here. And you're never going to guess what he grabbed me. He got me The Born Identity by Robert. Wow. Ludlum. Like, I was right into it. <laughs> right into it. I loved it. I devoured it. I read all the Robert Ludlum, Frederick Forsyth, you know, like you name it, all of those great spy thriller um, and crime novelists. That's awesome. Yeah. That's one of mine. How about, let's go Kim. How about you? Well, I have to alter the question as I do. So what's your favorite (laughs) library memory? I would say it's my most traumatic library memory. And that was at the Urbandale Public Library where I grew up just wearing out my card. And um, I was quite young, too young, when my mom had heard from someone who said, if your child asks questions about the way things go, meaning sex that um you should just fireworks. answer the fireworks question happen now. <laughs> this was distinctly not fireworky for me so i asked a question and she was like it's time let's go to the library and get the book <laughs> she took me to the li- i have the most vivid memory of standing <laughs> with the library counter was like up to here and i was looking at the librarian surely i'm sure you would not have done this not like li- many librarians are more discreet but i got a doozy who looked at the book that said in tiny print how to teach your child about sex really big <laughs> on the in yellow type and looked over at me and said is someone getting the doc today i wanted to perish <laughs> <laughs> on the spot it was a that's a horrible library memory now I feel like my mom would have the discretion to order it like have it delivered to our door do we have to make this a public rite of passage also I wasn't ready because she got to the first page I started to weep and said that does not happen in our house and left the room (laughs) it plan foiled everything was wrong and I slunk through the back door of that library for the rest of I was so glad when we moved a few years later didn't have to face that woman (laughs) that is traumatic it was I mean Uh she was well-meaning my mom was trying and we have howled about this since like don't just because a child asks I mean, I asked for a lot of things, by the way. I wanted a new Barbie and nobody got me that. But apparently we really (laughs) respond fast if we're asking about that. So anyway, that's my not so favorite library memory. It is a good memory. It is a good memory. (laughs) How about you, Julie? What's one of your favorites? Um, Well, I grew up in Eldora, which is a tiny town, 3,000 people at the time. Um, And we had the world's greatest librarian, Mrs. Holmes. uh, And she would... I swear that that woman could tell you what the best book possible was for you to read. Ah. Like that small town experience of walking in and she would greet you by your first name and say, I have just the book for you. So I loved her and I loved to go and go every Saturday was on my, you know, I'd stop at the Ben Franklin and get some, you know, penny candy and then the library and then I might go. So that's the yeah. best. Mrs. Holmes could have used, she could have given seminars on how to make children <laughs> feel loved at the library. It sounds I, like she knew. And in retrospect, I don't think Mrs. Holmes was an old lady, but I, yeah, to you, she, I'm she was probably, I age. guess if she's younger yeah, than I, totally. but at the time she seemed like an old wise sage <laughs> librarian. She was 35. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so for me, um, like most of you, um, my, my childhood library was so special. So I grew up in Mason City, 
Iowa. And there's a beautiful, beautiful library there. And I would go every Saturday as well. Either my dad would drop me off or we'd take like the mini bus. There's this little mini city bus. And I would just love to just wander around the stacks. And they do have like the, the children's area and the adult area had such like a almost invisible barrier where you're just like, I cannot wait until, and we had separate cards. So you had a children's card. And then when you like graduated to being whatever age it was, you could get a, a the adult card. And I remember just not being able to wait for that, but loving the children's side. It was like walking into Oz. It's like everything was technicolor and the smell. I can just still smell totally. um, what that, that that scent of walking into that space and um how much I loved it and then I'd always have a dime in my pocket to call my dad to come pick me up when you know hours later <laughs> when I was ready to, to go home. that's awesome so, yeah yeah lots of good memories that's great lots of good memories okay so my question is for for everybody what is a book that you read over and over again and do I start? Well, I don't have to start with me. Let me, let's have Nicole go. I actually have two books that I read over and over again. The first one is Peace Like a River by Leif Anger. Mm, so oh, good. So beautiful. And I need to go yeah. back to it time and time again, just to remind myself that the world is a beautiful place and that mm -hmm. there's, even when it's hard. So I love that book. Mm -hmm. And then the second one is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Really? Oh, it's so magical to me. I, I love that book. It's just, I love to read it in the fall because it's this fallish book and there's, you know, apple cider and there's popcorn. And I don't know, there's just this feeling of a fall in the air with that book. So I love going back to love it. That's a great book. Yeah. How about you, Kimberly? I'm an ancient woman. Um, <laughs> and so I, my returning books are typically by authors who are no longer with us. Um, so I often return to Jane Austen. I reread her and I'm, I've been on a Dickens kick lately. Do a lot of people say that because I, as I'm saying it out loud, it sounds a little suspicious, but I really, I really like him. Uh, I don't know. There's something about, I read a lot. I listen to a lot of books. I have a couple podcasts and I'm pot constantly reading for the guests who will be on the podcast. And so it's almost, it's always very contemporary and very much not even out often. And so um, I end up reading a lot of PDFs, you know, a lot of like just electronic copies of books. And so to indulge in the the slower pace of an Austin or a Dickens just feels so delightful. It takes a while. It, I use a different part of my brain and um, I just love it. I love, I know that there will probably be a mostly ha well, happy ending if you're with Jane questionable with Chuck, but, um, <laughs> that's those, I, I return over and over to them. So. Yeah. How about um, you, Julie? Well, I'm going to, I have this book that my mom introduced me to actually my mom and my sister and I all read it on a vacation when I was, I don't know, in my twenties. And it's a little, um, it's called geek love. I don't know if anyone oh. has read it. Um, it is also, oh, it introduced me to the world of circus people. Um, oh. but it is, it is the book that it just so intrigued me because the premise is a little disturbing. It's about a um, failing sideshow and the things that this couple will do to keep the sideshow going ah. as far as um, like the mom ingests some strange things while she's pregnant so that the children have some deformities that, oh, wow. that they can perform. Anyway, it's very strange. I know, but it really was <laughs> not Dickens. Book. It's not Dickens. It's not maybe a happy. Well, it is a happy ending, but it was the first book that I read that I thought to myself, like that's creativity, right? Yeah. Like how did someone come up with this and make these terrible people compelling and make, you know, create this whole world. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, that is my, I go back to that. And I actually generally, if I um, meet new reading friends. That's usually my first question. If they have okay. read, it, if they have not read it, then I make them. And okay. I've lost some friends it? that way. <laughs> not gonna lie, but it's worth <laughs> it. It's not for everyone. It's like a vetting. Can you is. handle it's geek love? You out. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the one that I oddly go back to the most frequently. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have, I have a few as well, but the one I 
I'm sharing today is, I, I love it. I love this author. It's the Persian Pickle Club by Sandra oh. Dallas. Why oh, everything? And book? Sandra Dallas is just quint quintessential kind of Midwest Western writer. She writes um, lots of times in like depression era or um, historical fiction, but this one's um, set in the great depression and um, this farm wife from Kansas, her name's Queenie Dean, has a group of friends and they have a quilting club and um, they rely on each other during hard times. But of course, because I'm a thriller mystery writer, there is a little mystery in here that um, that kind of shocks the community the air, and how these women kind of pull together regarding this dark secret in their community. And it is just really one of my favorites it's a small little book but it's just so beautifully written so Great. love Correct. it so much yeah Put it down yeah can I have to pop in and tell you that Sandra Dallas and I share an agent and you're when kidding I, no I and love her I love her too and I need to I don't know if you've met her or not but she is the most delightful lovely kind-hearted woman like as good as her books are that's how good she is as a person yeah. too just a darling. I, I, I was able to interview her really briefly for when I did sidekicks and side trips. And um, she was like, for 10 minutes. So but it was she was so, so gracious. And she writes so beautifully, like so emotionally. Um, yeah, that's, that's very great. cool. Well, That's if you awesome. ever get to say hi to her, say hi to her for me. Because I, I, I we are her. in <laughs> real time watching Heather fangirl. Very yeah. cool. See that? Yeah, like that. That's awesome. Okay, it's my turn to ask a question. Before I pivot, I also would like to mention mm -hmm. the reread of TCAM at our house. We call it TCAM, To Kill a Mockingbird. That's a reread. That's oh, a yeah, yeah, all yeah. The, multiple yeah. times. Multiple. Um, Have you listened yep. to the audio? Sissy Spacek mm -hmm. reads it. And yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, I'm writing that down too because yeah. I've gotten very into audiobooks and that was my second thing I was going to say. If you all have not listened to the audio of the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel mm. Pie Society, heartily recommend. All heartily right. recommend. It's a cast. Oh, so that's multiple great. Yeah, love the cast. Okay. Yeah. See guys, you all Dyersville, you watching how <laughs> we end up chatty chat. Yeah, we forget. <laughs> okay, here's my next question. What is it about living in Iowa particularly that inspires your own writing? Whether or not you're writing into that geographical space, into your novels or your books, or just what you know from Iowa or what you experience in Iowa, what is it that inspires your writing? Nicole, we will begin with you. <laughs> um, so, it um, is. Yeah. I started writing actually when we were living in British Columbia, Canada and surrounded by mountains and oceans and city. And I loved it there so much. Um, but I often felt and felt this way in college too, that when I, when people would ask, where are you from? And I'd say, Iowa, they'd go, Idaho, Ohio. Nice. It's, <laughs> you know, it's like nobody knew where Iowa was. And then when I would explain, oh, we're, you know, South of Minnesota and the Midwestern, it was like, meh, whatever. And they very quickly move right, right on as if there was nothing of interest here at all. Boo. Right? Boo. I know. And I, I, they were meaning to be, you know, rude in any way, but it just sure. wasn't something that interested them. So when I started writing, um, my first 10 books are all firmly set in Iowa. Um, and they really, I, I tried really hard in everything that I write to showcase the beauty of, of the landscape and the area here, but also of the people. I think that the people of Iowa are one of the greatest national treasures that we have. <laughs> I think maybe that's overstating it, but I, I love Not this. Us. And I desperately want people to see the beauty in it. So it's really fun to write about a place that I love as much as I do. Great. Heather? Yeah, I echo what Nicole says. It's just, you know, people think, we're all, you know, flat prairie. And of course we have that and it's beautiful, but we also have, it's such a varied landscape. And I, I really enjoy um, placing that in um, my novels as well. But I don't think there were two books um, that I read when I was younger that really made me think of setting as a character. Hmm. And um, the first one was um, a Thousand Acres by Jane Smiley, mm. which is set in Iowa, and yes. just, you know, beautiful, stark um, description of, of Iowa, um, gorgeously written. And then My Antonia by Willa Cather, which mm. is actually set in Nebraska, 
but um, that the, the landscape, the way she described it, it was so beautiful. And um, like I said, like a character and um, that's what I want to do. I mean, I don't know how successful I am at it at all, but that's what I like to strive to do in my own writing is just kind of make the, the setting as a part of, of the, you know, the one of the characters in the book. Mm -hmm. So I, um, and then Iowa, I think it's just has a really rich, um, a lot of, lot of opportunity to do that from either, you know, the set of uh, the landscape, town, cities, and the people as well. Mm -hmm. Julie? Um, well, you've all sort of taken my answers. So <laughs> I will just, I, I will go like if one more into like, as far as getting in the headspace to be writing, I enjoy our gloomy days in the winter. I'm very, very productive on those. Um, and then I just think there's something about just the like sounds of Iowa, right? Like I live sort of in the country. So like the winds through the fields and the trees and um, all of that, just the aesthetically pleasing, calming feeling I get when I sit down to write um, in the state of Iowa. I have a little different take to this question. And I think part of the way that I incorporate Iowa into my writing is what I have learned being an Iowan. And I see this over and over in publishing circles and in conversations with, um, I mean, I think all of us here, our editors and agents all live elsewhere many of them in New York. And so um, their, their exposure to Iowa is us. <laughs> and I find over and over again, a little bit of a surprise at how hard we work. And they often bring this up. You Iowa people work hard. You respect deadlines. Um, you send thank you notes. Um, all of those interactions um, and just the respect we have for the work itself. I I blame on Iowa. I think that's kind of understood um, in the houses that we grew up in, in the spaces where in the towns where we grew up in. And so um, I think Iowa actually has a lot to do with how I work um, in addition to inspiring certain scenes and sunsets. So well said, well said. Very well said. Okay. So this kind of goes to, this question kind of goes to like your writing setup. You know, we all have our little areas that we write and how, you know, what we need next to us. But my question is, because I, I struggle with this a little bit. Do you write in silence or with music or background noise? What, it, what is that like for you and why? Hmm. And Julie, let's start with you. Um, I like depend when I was writing, he's with the band. I had a um, power rock ballad playlist. <laughs> Yes, that I that listen to awesome. like over and over again, you know, the power ballads of the eighties. Oh, I sure um, do. Same yeah. one. Oh, no. no. <laughs> oh, come on. It's, is it karaoke night or library night? I can't. I don't. <laughs> um, and then this book that I'm, I'm working on a book now that has, it's a little magical realism, which is a new genre for me. And I have kind of constructed a, you know, Stevie Nicks, Fleetwood Mac. Oh, yeah. Nice. Taylor yeah. Swift. You're a playlist kind of. girl. Yeah. I'm a playlist girl. Mm -hmm. And it's, but it's the same playlist, like over and over. And yeah. I think that, that helps because I've now heard it so many times. <laughs> like my brain just like. It's Pavlovian when you yeah, hear Pavlovian, that. Pavlovian. Like, oh, the music. Time to write. Time to work. Do you listen That's while you write? While yes. you write, it's on. So not like yes. a an amp up. Okay. No, while I write. When it's you're on. done with this manuscript, if you're in a coffee shop and you hear one of those songs, you're going to be like, "Where's the laptop?" I know. I'm going to get to it. Go straight to it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, probably. Probably. Oh. I'm the opposite. I need total silence. Total weirdo. Okay. I wear earplugs in my silent house. I need it so silent. I was going to say, do you do you write in public ever? I my first several books I wrote at the library. Near right. my near my house, I would hire a babysitter, scurry on over there, write really fast, and get home. But as my kids have aged, I'm able to write here. Um, but I can't. I'm super sound sensitive. It's actually a little bit irritating. Yeah, I just am super easily distracted, so I definitely need silence. I could maybe do a little bit of classical music, but probably not. Probably not. I'd probably start to think and listen, pretend I'm in the Baroque area era. <laughs> And start doing a minuet so nope silence well I'm right in the middle between the two of you I 
I make playlists when I write. So it, it gets me into the scene. So uh-huh. the book or the book that I just finished is set in the mountains in the North Cascades of Washington. And I don't live there. So I need something to, you know, take me out of my 90 degree, super humid, you know, busy day in Iowa and set me in a cool, tranquil mountain setting. So I'll listen before I write. Um, but then when I start, I, I can't listen to anything either. Okay. I'll, yeah. It, On it, ramp. But I do like background noise. So if I'm okay. at a coffee shop, I can just kind of tune everything out. I don't need headphones or anything. I, and I can, or if I'm home, I, I like it when my kids have their friends over and they're talking in another room. Okay. So. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So I'm all over the place kind of, cause like I cannot have like hear other people, like people in the house that I, I have to shut a door or something and kind of block that kind of noise out. Um, I do listen to music, but sometimes I get so distracted that I think I wonder how productive I am when I'm, you know, I'm like, oh, I don't like this song. So then I'll <laughs> pour it ahead yeah, or, right. or something like that. And, um, but I do like noise, but I've um, also found that it depends on what part of the writing process I'm in. So when I am like really deep into a scene of like the actual composing, the first draft, um, something less more um oh gosh instrumental is probably better for me and that I can just put on repeat some different you know mm-hmm. go to Spotify or something and just say classical focus mu- music or something like that and when I'm That's revising okay. what was that Spotify can tell you to focus I need that um uh, well <laughs> yeah it, there's it like playlists like for that playlists that like <laughs> Uh, focus yeah. so then it won't have some like big huge like banging trombones or anything or, or guitar cymbals solo. or whatever yeah <laughs> and then um when I'm revising though like I do need noise but I, I can have like a tv show in the background just like for noise mm-hmm. but it can't be real people it's so odd I don't know it's like that awesome. feels like someone's looking over my shoulder when I'm writing and I don't Very like that so yeah yeah. And um, Nicole, I'm sorry. I think we st- I skipped over your, your question. I, I budged in front of you. So that's okay. No, not yeah. at all. Um, so <laughs> I'll write in a variety of genres, fiction and nonfiction. And if you could pick another genre to write in, what would it be and why? So Kim, let's start with you. I so admire mystery writers. So, you know, you guys, <laughs> two of you. <laughs> Uh, I cannot, I don't, I mean, you just talked to the person who needs earplugs. So if you think I'm going to be able to pull that thread for 300 pages, that's a no. (laughs) People would be dying in all the wrong spots. In chapter 20, Mr. Collins would come back and I'd forget that he'd already, sadly, (laughs) dearly departed. So I am so in awe of multiple threads being pulled. When I read the entire um, Harry Potter series, I could not even fathom that she started in book one, ended in seven, and was still like tying things together. Those kinds of things. I love the mystery writer, Louise Penny. And she mm-hmm. does such a beautiful job of each novel is its own thing. But she's also always like spinning these, you know, throwbacks if you've been reading the whole series. I'm just in awe of that. So that's what I would do if I could. How Nicole? Oh, oh, thanks. Passing it back at you. Just tossing the ball. I would love to write in every genre. There's really not one that I'm not interested in. Although Mm -hmm. I have actually written a um, middle grade series, like for ages, I don't know, maybe 10 to 12. I've started the first book and I have the other, well, I have the first book done, um, but I have five books in a series plotted there. And I would also love to read, or excuse me, I'd love to write fantasy. (laughs) I, yeah, I have some fun ideas that I'd like to play with. You will. Yeah, I I don't know. I hope so. It'd be fun, but we'll see. How about you, Heather? I've always wanted to write historical fiction, um, but like a mystery thriller, something, but it set set historically. So that's always been an interest of mine. Um, But as a a former elementary teacher, I always thought it'd be really fun to do a children's book. Uh, whether it be a picture book kind of thing or um, just a, you know, a middle grade, which is the, the younger kids. Um, just a, it's a, something in the vein of 
like the Ramona books or anything like that. I think that would be really, really fun. Yeah, I, um, I would love, this is very niche. Um, do you guys all remember those choose your adventure books? Oh yes. yes I loved those. I would love your to Gen X is showing, them, right? <laughs> but I don't know if I could do it. Like, I don't know. I need to like really study them. How do they keep it all connecting? Even yeah. when you don't know how it's going to connect. I feel totally. like that is some detail orienting situations yeah. that I'm not sure I could pull off, but I'm very intrigued yeah. by that. like an adult choose your own adventure. Cool. I would totally love. read that. I totally would. Mm-hmm. There's a playlist for that too, for sure. So Perfect. you're in. Mm-hmm. You should do that. I'd love that, Julie. All right. I will. <laughs> Maybe. Um, I believe we also skipped over Julie. Oh. Did we talk about that? Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. I just kind of jumped all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I actually feel really encouraged because evidently mystery writers aren't that detail oriented. You can just kind of do it whatever you, <laughs> whatever you want. <laughs> I thought maybe we were running short on time. So, I thought no, so too. No, no, she no. skipped like five All people. Right. I was like, okay. I no. guess we're moving on. Um, my question is, what are your must-haves as you sit down to write? Um, Heather, do you want to go first? Yeah, I have to have my, my water. I have to have water. I like Typically, that. I have some kind of little snack, chocolate or something. Lolo needs to be somewhere in the room, just Great hanging down. out. Mm-hmm. And like I said, some kind of background music. That's about it. Oh, and that, well, I guess I have tons of like um, post-it notes and pens. And um, I have a, you can't really see it here, but I have a card catalog behind me. And oh. um, there you go. Nice. So yeah. it's filled with all different kinds of little supplies that um, I might need to <laughs> to write my book. So awesome. that's all I need. We should mention that Lolo is your dog. Yes, <laughs> yes, sorry. Yes, I just Lolo said Lolo. Dog. It could be a child. That's okay, right. Help your imaginary. And a boy. We- um, <laughs> Kim? Um, I don't need much. Mostly, I think because I started writing when my kids were so little, the goal was really just a door, like a door I could shut. And it took a long time. It took many, many, many books, maybe seven, seven or eight <laughs> until I got a door. I took over this room, um, which was being used for my husband's paper storage. And <laughs> he's an orthodontist and he doesn't need that. And no. so I took it over in a gentle, um, gentle, gentle military operation. And it has been so delightful. There's a door behind the camera and it gives me an inordinate amount of joy. So really I need a door. Um, I have some, I'm very particular about pens. I'm a real weirdo about pens. I have a very particular Japanese 0.5 pen. <laughs> <laughs> so I do like a little paper next to me cause I'm writing stuff, but mostly just the laptop and a door. Very nice that's that's very low maintenance it's very stripped down yeah Yeah. Yeah. how about you nicole uh i need two things i i need to get the wiggles out (laughs) i have a really hard time sitting still so i work out before i write and Ah. sweat hard get myself really tired and then i write but i also get up regularly and have to like the house or do 10 minutes of yoga or take the dogs for a walk or something, anything. I actually just bought an under the desk walking. Um, oh, treadmill. treadmill. Yeah. It's in my garage. I haven't even taken it out yet, but I'm super excited because I can put it on an incline and then I can walk while I'm writing. Yeah. And then the only other thing that I need is a notebook and a pen. I, I write everything longhand to start. So yeah, that's very Marvel. Good. You also love cinnamon yeah. tea. I just I want do. to add that in. That's right. Yeah. That's calms me down yeah, sometimes that's really good. <laughs> to write. if I could find a way to write and walk at the same time I would be golden so you're about to well yeah, you you're going to be able to write longhand and walk like I no. can typing no I'd like no. to you to video that if you do it <laughs> you go live the first time you attempt yeah. that that would be and that's, drink that's, tea yeah that's, that's, that's a new a new olympic event if you yes. can do that it's like the oh triathlon of writing <laughs> race <laughs> race walking literary version i like it yes well i am mostly just um my water um 
a notebook and a pen. I like to, I, I try to write 10, 10 pages a day and I write out the page numbers and then I very excitedly cross them off. Okay. As I, as I them, so I feel like I'm getting somewhere. Otherwise totally. I spend all of my time going back and being like, how many pages did I write? How many yeah. pages did I write? Yeah, yeah. This is just, and then I get to 10 and then I move on. So you page count, not word count. I know. Yes, I do. And you're saying you laptop, but on the side, you're doing your crossing yeah. off. I you don't write have... on the laptop, but you cross off manually. Yep. I, I write like chapter okay. 14 and then I write, you know, however, whatever page 56, number. 57, 20. 58, yep. 59. How and about I that? Like, yeah. Okay. Good. I like it. I'm learning a lot about you guys tonight. Yeah. It's exciting. Oh, it's my turn. Tell us something about yourselves that we don't likely know. And the more obscure, the better. I don't I'm shivering with delight like Owen Meany to think of who I should start with here I think Heather oh boy you know I am so boring there is really nothing false no so false <laughs> I mean so true I so I was thinking about this um I was actually nobody knows this really but I was on the golf team in high school yeah. and never played a meet <laughs> never played a meet I only joined because I hurt my knee playing basketball and there was a you know a lot of walking in golf, so I just got to walk the holes. I never played in a meet. Um, That's hilarious. Are you in the, the are you in the yearbook photo? That's really all I want to know. I you know what I'd have to look again. I don't even I know if they let me be in up. that. <laughs> I will. I will <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> did you put it on yeah. college applications? No, I, I don't believe I did. Oh, you're so I honest. Didn't. Yeah, oh, that's so good. I, I, I never. Not I could barely hit the ball, but I, you know, okay. it was a good, oh, good walking workout. That's amazing. And easy on your <laughs> knee. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nicole Bart, <laughs> obscure. Okay. I don't think I've ever told anybody this really. Oh my Ooh. gosh. Oh like no, it's confessions. Nothing fancy. I'm just trying to come up with something that, that you guys wouldn't know about me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I grew up, um, my, my grandparents had a boat, so I grew up on a boat um, or going boating most of my life. And mm -hmm. I learned to water ski when I was nine years old. Yeah. Um, my wow. aunt took the water with me and she sat on the back of my skis. Sure. And then when we hit it and the boat took off, she kind of boosted me out of the water, popped yeah, the yeah. water and, and I skied. So I've been, been skiing my whole life. I love to slalom. And every year... Oh farther away from this. I, I, we don't have a boat. This isn't something we do very regularly anymore. Like I go boating maybe once a summer, but if I go boating, I have to ski and I have to try and see if I can get up on a slalom ski. And we went boating last Sunday and I got up on a slalom ski. So I, good yay. girl. Still have it. My kids Still like, got it. Do that? And I totally did. <laughs> yeah. That's the victory That's moment awesome. when your children say, what? Just yeah. watch this mm -hmm. mic drop. I had a life before you. <laughs> the Good things moment. I can do. Yeah. Julie Stone. Um, well, let's see. I have a I have a twofer. The first okay. kind of makes the second um equally unbelievable and also just knowing me. Um, but I was born with club feet is the first thing. Okay. Pretty pretty um substantially club footed as a child and wore casts and brace until I was nine. Okay. Um, I did not well, know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. So that is, that sets the stage for the next zinger, which is I still to this day hold a middle school track record. Oh, wow. I it, want you to tell me event? what it was. It was the, um, well, it was the sprint medley <laughs> relay, which the reason I still have the record is because it was in yards. And now, of course, all <laughs> Oh. <laughs> they switched everything so no one will <gasps> break it i will hold it for all you, of my for life. your and whole it, life and it had better be in my in my eulogy i would like it <laughs> yeah. i would like it in still the counts movie. julie yeah. still counts yeah i was the hundred amazing 100 yard dash thank you yeah <laughs> that's amazing we'll we hope not to be at your eulogy because yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to be there, but if I am, I will mention there's Thank something you. you've forgotten. Yes. Something um, that important. is hilarious. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, I have two things. One is not super obscure. In fact, the story is in the new book, so it's not obscure. And that is that I have been the house guest of a former Nazi 
army officer. Uh, please, please, that's just a true story. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to, obviously. I was in a choir in <laughs> at St. Olaf College because the Lutherans love their choirs. <laughs> and we had an Australia, New Zealand tour. And for one of my host families with my friend, Suzanne, we went off with our little choir robes and we got into the living room of this very sweet older couple that spoke with a very distinct non-New Zealand accent. And the gentleman asked us to sit down on the couch and said we want he wanted to show us a video. And the video was Nazi propaganda that <gasps> talked in full serious BBC voice about how we had gotten it all wrong and that the Holocaust was a total farce or a total, it was a lie. And Suzanne and I got closer and closer to each other <laughs> on the velour. And after all, you're like, we're really tired. We have a concert tomorrow. We're going to go to bed. Is that okay? Bye. I'll be there saying. And um, oh I mean, God. he was in full, he was in full um, lecture mode. He told us that our university oh. wasn't teaching us the right things. And um, it was really quite something. So that's wow. true. That's a true story. And it's a strange story. Um, but boy, we had people lean in listening on the tour bus the next day. Everyone else yeah. is talking about like the lame, whatever pork chop they ate. And we're like, we had an unusual <laughs> circumstance. <laughs> I want to take wow. them off the host list. Uh, so that's the first <laughs> one. And then the other, I am so thrilled to hear you guys go first and to hear about your golf career, Heather. Yeah, and sorry. <laughs> your so slaloming, the, look at the athletic prowess, Julie <laughs> Stone record holder, because my obscure fact that will likely never need to be said again is that I also was a junior high track record holder in the shot put no <laughs> yeah is there a video <laughs> for me years video. it stood and that's just because we had the smallest track team ever we had four people in our I mean our school was so small, small that my track coach would take us out into the middle of the the field during meets and say, okay, we need some points for long jump. Kim, I'll show you how to do it. And then I would do I'm <laughs> five, four in my best shoes. Okay. I didn't need to be long jumping. I was the shot. <laughs> do you think you could still do it? Absolutely not. There is no, I didn't do it then. I mean, there just was no warm body. I would, that's why I had the record. So you guys, let it be said, literary women are athletic-ish women. Ish. <laughs> Heavy on the ish. ish. Amazing that everyone That's said awesome. the same. That's so great. I think um, Julia. Oh, it's me. Yes. Um, yeah. My question is, as a writer, who? what would you choose as your spirit animal? <laughs> Woodchuck, really obviously. You. What? Woodchuck, obviously. They're what? the weirdest what? animal. <laughs> they do <they, laughs> what are obviously. they follow me? They nest in my whole house under my deck. Every time I think I am a serious person, I will see a woodchuck and it will remind me I can't be a serious person because woodchucks exist. Chuckles, we call him Chuckles. He comes around you all have the time. A lot of animals around your deck. Though. I don't even want to discuss it. We had a bobcat <laughs> recently, and I don't even yeah. why. I'm in Des Moines. Did the woodchuck survive the bobcat? Yeah, there was no, like I, that, animal kingdom moment on your. They're deck. strange animals, Julie. That's what I'm saying, and <laughs> very <laughs> persistent. That's Fair, that's you. You're persistent. Sure, <laughs> persistent, mostly. <laughs> My spirit animal. I probably ruined this question for everyone else. You guys are going to be like <laughs> swans, <laughs> doves, because I love peace. And I'm like, look at story of my life. Heather? Oh, well. All of that. Yeah, all of that. No, initially I would thought, well, a dog, because, you know, Lolo. But I came across the cutest little reel of a little monkey holding a little cup sipping oh. out of a straw. <laughs> Little That's tiny monkey. I'm like, that is my spirit animal. <laughs> I sit around all day with my cup, drinking out my straw. <laughs> That's adorable. So that that little monkey knew exactly uh, spoke how to I you. felt and what I needed. So yeah. monkey, very good, very good. How about you, Nicole? I I don't know. I'm bad at these questions. <laughs> I I had to. Uh, we have a puppy. He's a year old. His name is Teddy. Oh. 
the Good sweetest dog you've ever met in your life. He's so stinking cute, but he's so dumb. He's so yeah. dumb. <laughs> that kind of goes together sometimes. Yeah. And, and I feel like yeah. I don't know, every once in a while, I'm like, dude, I, I get you. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> like Teddy is my spirit animal, but don't tell my kids. <laughs> Uh, um I I'm gonna go with the lame cat just because okay. I just spend most of my time with my cats and you know they like to lay around and give strong opinions about mm, things mm-hmm. um and run around like crazy for absolutely no reason out of nowhere <laughs> you connect with this <laughs> I connect with that feeling this frenetic I don't know why I feel so agitated but off I'll go <laughs> awesome oh we have one more question in our not so rapid round speed round <laughs> we are good at rapid i think no, that's- i should yeah. never have said speed round so our final question is how do you handle moments of creative doubt what do you do when you're feeling like oh i don't know if this is if i can do this anymore and i feel like we have that all the time so mm-hmm. what do you do who's me heather oh Okay, so I do what I do. I go for walks, but I also always pick up. Um, there is a fabulous book by Anne Lamott called Bird by Bird, which has a story about um, a, a, why it's called Bird by Bird. And so she's all about you take something big and break it down. And there's this lovely, sweet story about her brother that she talks about um, how that that's why the Bird by Bird references in there but just to break it down into small manageable chunks and sometimes I just go back and read how other authors tackle things um, and get inspiration from other people uh, makes all the difference Julie and I we had the chance to go listen to Claire Lombardo speak in Iowa City the other day and just hearing somebody else's perspective on writing in the world just mm. kind of reignites some excitement and um that always seems to help as well. Julie. Um, I would say that I reach out to my writer friends and see, you know, kind of get a pulse on what, what they have going on and if they're mm-hmm. struggling or, you know, sometimes just to get over the hump in a project that I'm at. Um, I was on a writing retreat and I was saying, oh, I'm having a hard time. I keep writing myself into this corner. And then I realized, it's it's a dead end and then I start over again and she looked at it and she's like oh it's here here's the problem oh it's the best. that is so I mean it's the best it's the best having writing friends when you try to do this mm-hmm. so I think that that is probably my my uh I don't know secret weapon mm-hmm. yeah that's a great yeah. one yeah, I'd say I do those. I walk, I talk to like-minded people. Um, oftentimes when I'm stuck, I just need to go live a little, mm. right? I mean, we get we end up being pretty tunnel visioned as writers, I think. And for me, staring at that blank page hardly ever helps things shake loose. I need to leave. I need to go have an experience. It has might have nothing to do with what I'm writing about, but I feel like... Um, you know, they've done such beautiful studies about how we do our best creative work when we're not meaning to be creative. So mm-hmm. there's something that we fuel out in the larger world that ends up infused into our into our writing. But um, that has to be, I've gotten better at recognizing that instead of fussing and instead just go do something that engages a different part of my brain and my body. And usually that will, that will shake it loose. Hmm. Nicole? I, I totally agree with that. And piggybacking on that just a little bit, I, whenever I finish a book, I think this is it. Like, I don't have any more ideas. I don't know that there's anything left inside of me. So I finished my book um, at the end of June, my family and I left on vacation. And I, I said to my husband the night before we left to come home, I was like, I, I think I'm going to take a sabbatical. I, you know, give me three to six months to kind of figure out what's next and, and where I want to go from here. Well, on the flight, on the way home, <laughs> <laughs> our red eye flight from Hawaii to the continental United States and my kids are all sleeping I can't sleep but I have headphones on and I'm listening to music and I'm kind of half drifting I guess and at one point I went I know exactly what I'm gonna do <laughs> I to know that everything came out um, I, oh, I know I'm gonna oh do. that's such a great feeling, such yeah. A great feeling but yeah kind of like what you said Kim I I feel like what if if I am ever lacking in inspiration 
disconnecting from that and allowing myself to find inspiration in the world around me in other books that I'm reading. I read voraciously on that vacation, right? Plugging into my family, my friends. And I, I feel like all of the ingredients for my next book are always in my head. Mm. I just need a way to kind of shake it all loose and make yeah, them all good. come together to this place where I can coalesce them into a story. So oh, that's great. <laughs> so great. Very good. All right. That's it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think we did all those questions. So now I think we're ready to talk about our Story Society of Iowa bingo challenge. Yes. Um, so we uh, had a little, we, we, we were trying to come up with a date to do our next uh, get together on Facebook with each other and all of our um, virtual yeah. friends. And as it turned out, we were going to a summer theme. And then we could, the only date that all of us could find was the end of August, which is not really, then the summer is over. So then we came up with this brilliant idea to do a summer reading bingo, which here is our bingo card. You can find it on, I believe all of our author pages and also on our Story Society um, of Iowa Facebook page. Um, and it has all these great, Heather made it. It's all these great um, ways different books, kinds of books that you can read. There it is. That's better than me holding it up. Nice. Much, much, much easier. So as you can <laughs> see, there's lots of interesting, various um, topics of things you can be reading. Books by a book set in Iowa, a classic, um, a book by one of us, um, one set in the summer. I don't need to read them all. But if you, um, if you complete the challenge uh, and get a bingo, you will be rewarded with not a personal pan pizza, I pushed hard for the personal pan pizza, but we couldn't figure out how to do it. So instead you will receive a sticker. I got it. I've got it here. Just give me a second. I'll share this. And we're talking about bingo, it's... not blackout for you bingo There we go. Yes, just a bingo. And that that is the sticker <laughs> that you will get. Or your laptop, your water bottle, whatever. Your diary or your sticker journal. Maybe you have a sticker journal from the 80s, 70s. <laughs> Um, and, and that will be your, uh, reward. Now, if you do happen to get a blackout, um, Kimberly, the prizes go up in value. Yes, and they do. I, as they should. As they should. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Heather, would you share some of our other? Prizes? Yeah. So, yeah. So we have lots of fun prizes. Um, we have, um, this wonderful story society of Iowa mug. So pretty. That could be yours. So and so if we, you know, we get a lot of people who, who are getting a, a blackout or, or complete the challenge. Yeah, because we'll you can also in. backload books you've already read. If you're starting tonight, yeah. any book, any of these you've already crossed off. We, we are this summer, this summer, right. we aren't mm -hmm. sticklers. Be honest guys. You don't need to yes. steal prices. <laughs> Actually, yeah. we don't care. Here's this incredible <laughs> Story so Society of Iowa, little wine tumbler Lovely. Um, is an, an option. And we have, this is, this is a fun one. We have uh, the mm. Story Society of Iowa so t-shirt. With our cute so, little, Nicole came out with our tagline, right? Mm, Endlessly entertaining. Yes. I love it. Yes. Mm. Yep. And so that's an option. And I think I have one more. What is the last one? Oh yeah. Candle. The candle. So oh, cute. Look how warm that person looks, just even holding it. No, I can't wait. <laughs> there again. I just can't wait. Put yeah. on my candle and light my candle. Yep. So yeah. there that is. Oh so, yeah. So please join us. We're gonna um divulge our um well, I don't know. We're not going to divulge any winners. I don't know why I said that, but we'll, well talk. How do people more. let us know if they have a bingo or a blackout? Um, they can, I guess, take a picture and upload and send it to us on our Facebook page, post it to our post Facebook page. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Um, yep. And we are going to, um, Nicole, do you want to talk about what we have coming up where maybe some of this will be all revealed? Absolutely. So on August 29 at seven o'clock um, PM that evening, we're going to be doing uh, another story, story society of Iowa, like get together 
we go on. It's kind of like this, except for you can see all of us at once because we do it on a different platform. Um, it's kind of nice that you can see us react to each other in real time. But the theme is going to be summer vacation. So, you know, when you go back to school and what does your teacher make you write an essay about? What did you do on your summer vacation? So we're going to be talking about that with each other, but it's really interactive. Our, we often get a very large crowd and then people ask mm -hmm. questions. And we kind of deal with them on the fly. It's just fun and conversational, lots of laughs. We always do giveaways. So that's a great, yeah, just a great opportunity to learn more about us and what we do and have some fun. So we'd love to see you there August 29, 7 p.m. Um, on any of our Facebook pages. If you come to our Facebook page, you're going to find it there. And yeah, we'll be streaming from, from there. Well, wonderful. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. I'm going to hand it back to Shirley. Um, our intrepid uh, librarian here and um, see if there are any questions for us. Oh. <laughs> We've outlasted the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> this was really a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. I don't know about anybody else, but there was a lot of giggles. <laughs> yeah, a lot of giggles. So, it was really interesting. I do know that I'm going to be reading three new authors that I haven't read before. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Wonderful. Um, are there any favorite writing podcasts that you can recommend? Or, or do you do podcasts individually and what do you Kim? I do. Kimberly, talk. Yeah, yeah actually, I do two podcasts. One is called The Writing Room. So it's with my friend Bob Goff, who's a um, best selling author. We've got lots of fun guests that we have on, and we they're usually about 30 minutes or so. We talk shop. So it's called The Writing Room. And uh, the other one, my own personal podcast is called For Real with Kimberly Stewart. And I end up talking to mostly authors because I surround myself with these people and I can't get away from with them or from them. So um, I've loved doing both of those. It's a funny thing when you write a book, it takes 80 years for it to get into print. And so podcasts have been such a fun way to have, it's like a mini release every other week for me. And that is just so fun to have a little bit more real time reaction um, in conversation with people. So yeah, the writing room might be your be your spot. We're for real. Thanks for asking. I'll throw one more out there. I am a big fan. If you're looking for a good writing podcast on just kind of the nuts and bolts of it, um, the, the name is the expletive that no one tells you about writing. So it's a very oh, long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one tells you about. It. Sorry, I'm trying to keep this. <laughs> Try. <laughs> But it's with um, Cece Lyra and, um, oh goodness, I'm blanking on her name. It's two literary agents and an author. Oh. And every week, yeah, I love listening to them. Every week they have an interview with an author. But before that, they do, um, they go through a query letter and the first mm. five pages of the book. And they kind of pull it apart in real time on the podcast. Oh, cool. You kind of hear, yeah, like what real feedback from actual oh editing. that's great so oh, I listen to them every week I really enjoy it but yeah you're gonna have to look up <laughs> they, they actually <laughs> don't spell out the word it's just s and then some the you know, s no one tells you about writing is that what you say exactly. yep yep mm -hmm. that is a very long name I'm surprised <laughs> they landed there I know okay that's great thanks Nikki did you all give birth to the story society during the shutdown or afterwards? Was the pandemic part of this, the isolation? Or just um, I, oh, that's different good locations? I don't remember. I think it was after. I think so, too. Uh, I, I, I know what it was. friends there. I know we what it was. There. I I had a new book come out. And um, I didn't have an event on one of my nights. There was like an opening. Oh, okay. And... Yeah. It was still kind of shut down. I know there weren't as many. Um, there was still a lot of virtual. There's still, it was kind of back and forth. It was a few events um, in person, but a lot weren't. And I, I I think I emailed all you guys and said, do you guys want to just do something online? And it was so much fun. It was so much fun. It was fun. A love letter to Iowa, I think we call yeah. it. Mm -hmm. so. 
right. we have to say Heather has been our spearheader <laughs> and our fearless leader. <laughs> and I want you to know Iowan to Iowan, she is a treasure. There a lot Heather's had a ton of success in her in her writing life. And sometimes what happens when people have that much success, they, I don't know, eat bonbons and caviar and forget the <laughs> other people. And, Heather and is the opposite of that. She always sets more places at the table. Just that she said that tells you who she is. Like she had a free night. And instead of saying, I'm going online, I'm going to tell you about myself. She had all of her friends get together and chat. Um, uh, as a conversation. So that has been so much fun. We adore her, but we really, that's part of the heartbeat of this group. Just as Julie said at the beginning, a lot of what we do is in yoga pants in front of our screens alone. And so it is such a joy to be able to, um, come together as friends and as co-authors, co-authors, fellow authors to just Mm -hmm. chat about all the things that go on in our given days. Um, but Heather was the one to start it. Sometimes you just need somebody to go first and mm -hmm. she went first. So we're grateful. You guys are the best. So it's, it's always, always so much fun to, to be together. Any other questions? Yeah, I have another one. Are you uh, pantsers or outliners? Oh, uh, writer uh, question. A pantser or a plotter? This isn't your first rodeo. <laughs> we see you in the third row. <laughs> <laughs> Want to do a quick hit? Pantser or plotter? Nicole? Uh, plotter now. I started out pantser. I plot now because I write mystery. And I don't know that you can pants and write a mystery. I don't know. Maybe you can. I can't. A reformed pantser. Ooh. Yes, mm -hmm. a reformed pantser. I'm also a reformed pantser. Started as a pantser, now a plotter. Heather? I am also a reformed pantser. Oh my maybe. Um, I wrote my first really 10 novels as a pantser and got myself into a lot of problems, <laughs> a lot of troubles, <laughs> a lot of editing. <laughs> and um, for the book I'm working on now, I've I, I plotted it out and now but I, I was surprised and happy to see that their surprises are still there because I think that's such a fun part of mm -hmm. of writing is even right. if you plot it out to be able to surprise yourself and that you know I have gone off script a little bit but I have that framework and it has helped me quite a bit but I'll let mm -hmm. you know next time I see you how that all all goes <laughs> how, how the book ends we'll wait up, for your so. report yeah yeah. Um, I am a, I am a pantser. I mean, I could have called that. I knew I it. Know. I, I, Power I want to be a plotter. I want to be a plotter. <laughs> it seems like it would be easier, <laughs> but even if I plot, I don't pay attention to it. So <laughs> That's awesome. I just have to keep pantsing. If it's working, why mm -hmm. change it? We only change yeah. because we got into yeah. trouble. So yes, it's true. Right. Right. Hey, you all, um, you, you know, the imagination is so important to your work. Is there something you do to get your left hemisphere out of the way? Mm. So to speak, you know, like we live in this world that is very much demanding that from us all the time. So to get into that imaginary realm, is there mm. something you can do? Mm, great question. That's a good question. I'll hop in there. I think I'll go ahead. <laughs> No, no, go ahead, Nicole. I was going to say the number one thing that has sparked my creativity is getting rid of all the screens. I don't type on a computer. I don't write on an iPad. When, when I start to write, everything goes out of the room that I'm in, everything technological. So I have nothing but a pen and, and paper. And for some reason, that triggers a completely different response mm. in my And the, the creativity that flows and the excitement that I have being able to do that is, yeah, mm. really unparalleled. Good. I love that. Me too. We are so connected to screens. It's so yeah. hard to not have one in the room. I admire that. I need to, to give that a try. I, I actually, one thing that really, it, kind of in that same vein, though, Nicole, is when I go, sw I love to swim. I learned to swim just a few years ago and um, swim la laps now. And when you're in the pool, there's no electronics. There's nothing. It's just you and your brain. And I, I, kind of work through a lot of those sticky plot point plot points as I'm swimming. Mm. And it it's really a nice 
a nice way to kind of clear the noise out of the mm. way and just focus on on the writing when but not writing because I think we'd all say most of our writing is done not in front of the screen mm. <laughs> it's done you know mm -hmm. thinking about things as we go through our days yeah I think too um I know there's a lot of uh I don't know, backlash about people saying like, I write every day. And I think that if you're doing it every day, you're staying in the world mm -hmm. that you're working on. And so some of that stuff is churning in, in the back of your brain. And then you sit down and you've, you know, uh, arrived at a solution or have a new direction to go. Mm -hmm. But if, I find if I take breaks, like I was on vacation and I didn't work every day, it was hard to jump right back into it mm -hmm. and unleash that part of my brain. It was still, you know, picking up my phone or. Yeah. All of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree. I'm totally on with everything except for Nicole. I don't know how you write longhand. I couldn't do it. I would get a cramp. I don't, my, <laughs> my hand does not obey me and I just find typing a little bit faster. Um, but it's true. Our, our compatriot Callie Van Bali White, who's not here this evening she one time, I, she wouldn't mind me sharing the story, but she was working on a deadline and it just was not coming. And so she went down into her basement, which has a cinder block foundation and zero Wi-Fi. She can't get it there. She wants it. And boy, did she finish that novel because she just remo physically removed from herself and from her laptop screen, the ability to be distracted. So mm -hmm. there's something to be said for that. I think mean, you're right. I can't see who asked the question, but you're right that the noise is loud. The noise is loud. So I think part of what unleashes that Im imaginative and creative thinking is just getting somewhere where the noise can't find you. I'm going to, I'm going to pop in just a little bit more. And I, I still want to talk about writing longhand because I think that you all would really love it so much. You need a couple of rules if you're going to do it. And rule number one is who cares about your handwriting and it doesn't have to look great. I, I don't even think you would be able to, I have my notebook here. <laughs> read yours. <laughs> you can't read it. There's no way that you could. Yeah. But one of the rules I have for myself is it doesn't matter what it looks like and just just keep going. Like like don't mm -hmm. don't stop. And even if I start out going, this is stupid. I hate this exercise. But I'm going to write about my character a little bit, and it just it starts to flow. And it mm -hmm. oh, there's mm -hmm. brain science on this too. It it unlocks a completely different part of your brain. And you're I've reading. read that. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, try it. Just, just try it. <laughs> <laughs> Deal. I'm going to try it. I'll try it. Yeah. Thank you all. I can't see if anybody else is raising a hand or has a question. I think that's good. We had a wonderful time here. Thank you guys so much for coming and doing this with us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Shirley. We appreciate it. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah.